then the, we go to the chief complaint. So the chief complaint is the best uh, uh, indication or the best uh, tool which takes you to the direction of uh, final diagnosis. Okay, you, uh, we have to be patient, listen to uh, the patient, what he is telling, okay. And uh, he will tell you how, you, he, what, why, what, uh, what uh, symptoms or signs he, he is facing, what is the problem he is facing. That important clues or that important words which he tells you will take you to the final diagnosis. Then we have history and then medical and dental history, then oral examination, coronal evaluation, clinical test and data analysis and treatment plan. We will discuss them all together in the coming slides. Okay, then we have pulpal diagnosis. Pulpal diagnosis can be normal pulp, reversible pulpitis, irreversible pulpitis, atroplastic pulpitis, that is the pulp polyp, pulp necrosis, previously treated and previously endodontically treated to previously initiated RCT, which has not been completed, referred to you or patient came to you without referral and calcifications. And then is the periapical diagnosis, that is the normal. Normal periapical structure, symptomatic apical periodontitis, asymptomatic apical periodontitis, that is, there is no pain, acute apical abscess, which is abscess which has arisen suddenly, and there's a swelling with pain, chronic apical abscess, which has a drinking sinus. The pain might be low, low grade, or there might be no pain, but the patient feels a bad taste in the mouth due to the sinus opening. Cellulitis, widespread swelling in the cellulitis, and condensing of osteotitis. This can definitely be seen in the radiograph only when you do radiograph and an apical scar, which has happened after the endodontic treatment is completed. So first is the chief complaint. So we have to listen as uh, said uh, wisely by Sir William Mosler. We are uh, listening to the patient. The patient will give you a complete diagnosis. The patient will give important clues. This, yes, when I'm lying down in the night, I feel pain. Okay, that means the tooth is necrotic. Our patient is coming with a water bottle in his hand and he will tell you, okay, when I'm watching, when I'm drinking the water, there's a relief. Means the tooth is necrotic and water is uh, causing an effect of decreasing the pressure inside the tooth. So patient feels less pain due to cold water. Means patient, the tooth is reacting more to the more to the heat and the tooth is necrotic. Now we have to some uh, medical, a proper medical history before progressing to the treatment is very important. Uh, suppose the illness, past illnesses or illnesses uh, due to which the patient is on medication. Maybe patient is on some psychotic medication which can alter the uh, cold testing and EPT testing. Some medication, maybe is taking some medication due to pain like arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or simple arthritis, which can still alter our uh, uh, the patient response on, uh, on TOP palpations and cold tests. And what, uh, reporting vital signs is important. Uh, reporting a baseline, uh, baseline uh, blood pressure and pulse and oxygen saturation is important. And any uh, medical report since last six months, this is very important because now, uh, so now is a time when we are in this uh, COVID situation. So in due to the COVID, what happens is the lungs are too much affected of the patient and patient might have difficulty in breathing. And some patients who are to before completely healthy, they have uh, developed some kind of, an, uh, kind of asthma due to which we have to alter uh, our medication. Now the dental history, the dental history is the present dental history in which we have to ask the patients, okay, when did the pain start? How long is the pain? Is the pain throughout the day or is the kind of intermittent pain or is the kind of continuous pain? Pain increases on lying down or did you eat anything which causes pain or did you eat anything which or drink anything which relieves the pain? and urgency of the treatment. Okay, if it is a big swelling, 
which patients cannot tolerate anymore. The pain is so excruciating that he cannot sleep or cannot do his work. These kind of uh, situations, they demand that an emergency access opening is done and to relieve the pressure inside the tooth and the pulpectomy or the coronal pulp is removed and a sedative dressing to be placed so that the, uh, the patient feels more uh, better. And in this situation, we should always try to ask open-ended question and as close-ended questions will uh, not lead us to the diagnosis, okay? So open-ended questions like uh, how does pain started, what uh, he eats or drinks, which increases or decreases the pain, where is the pain, what is the location of the pain, and when the pain increases or when it is decreasing. And before coming to the office, has he taken any medication? Like him? people tend to self-medicate there and themselves to relieve from pain. So self-medication, if it is there, uh, on the cold test and uh, electrical testing, the response will be altered and it can lead to a improper diagnosis. So this is very important. Recent trauma, in recent trauma, the tooth will be still in the sh uh, state of shock. So all the testings kind of will kind of uh, confusing. EPT will not work at all. That's all. It will give misleading results. And recent periodontal treatment, if a patient has gone and under through some recent periodontal treatment, then this recent periodontal treatment can lead to, uh, in some cases, can lead to endodontic issues like uh, swelling or like in the gum or the or pain, like uh, when you are doing your attach subgingivally, uh, it's, uh, we tend to sometimes uh, remove the cementum with the cure attach. And in this case, uh, there is a development of a communication from the periodontal ligament to the lateral canals or the, to the apex and can lead to periendo uh, lesion or endoperio lesion. Okay. And recent restorations. Some patients often, uh, often they come to the uh, to the practice, and they give a history that they have done a recent filling in some other clinic. And after they have done filling, they cannot chew on the on hard food. They cannot bite on the hard food. Okay, or they they will say that okay after doing the filling, my sensitivity has increased too much, doctor. I cannot eat anything cold, or I think cannot cannot drink anything hot. Or after doing a filling, suddenly the pain is too much. I cannot bear the bear. I cannot bear the restoration. So these are the all symptoms, all things which tell us okay that means the uh, doctor dentist who has done filling initially, he has maybe the cavity was too deep, too close to the pulp, and he has uh, by mistake done a filling on that. Okay, which is which is causing these issues. So this can take us to the cause, cause. What is the cause of the current problem? So next we will talk, talk about an uh, extraoral and interoral uh, examination. Extraoral when the patient is entering, the extraoral examination starts when the patient is entering your clinic. You know that, okay, which side, if it is panning, uh, left side or right side, if the side is panning, you will hold it like this and uh, he will uh, really uh, be in pain. You can, from his facial expression only, you can make out, yes, this guy is in terrible pain, okay? And you can see the facial asymmetry due to swelling, intraoral swelling or external swelling. You can see the change of the color due to swelling, it becomes more reddish, okay? The lymph nodes might be enlarged. There might be sinusitis, there might be sinus. Sometimes the sinus, uh, in sinus also, patients complain that he have pain in the, in the posterior teeth from starting from premolar to the last molar. And you check the full oral cavity, there's nothing, no, no uh, periodontal issue, no dental issues, no cavities, nothing. So then it's a need to refer the patient to the ENT surgeon. And sometimes ENT will refer back to you when he they can't find any issues in the sinus on the OPG or all the x-rays and MRI when the sinus is perfectly okay, but still the patient complains is uh, the doctor, my pain is still not going after all the medication there. The ENT will back refer to you that, okay, doctor, this patient still, he complains of pain, please check. And when you will check, 
there will be some type of, I think, hidden class two cavity, either distally or measly, or there is some kind of color change in the coronal part of the tooth that will uh, indicate that the cavity, that the caries process, it is pinpoint from the top, but inside it is expanding like this, okay? And it is reaching the dorsal. The moment you tooth, uh, treat the, that, that tooth, the sinusitis will go. This is uh, known as uh, endodontically related sinusitis, okay? And another is uh, coronal evaluation of the troublesome tooth. In that, we check the color change in the tooth. Okay, we check the uh, we check some deep grooves, like in upper lateral incisors. There can be sometimes deep palatal groove. In the deep palatal groove, there will be some kind of uh, pocket, or the, the deep palatal group is extending till the horn of the pulp which has caused this uh, irritation slowly and made the pulp necrotic or asymptomatic. So the history taking is basically nowadays done in subjective objective appraisal plan, uh, uh, appraisal plan type. So subjective is the information which the patient will give, which he will tell uh, when you're doing test or he will tell you in the chief complaint and history of present illness and illness and the nature of the pain. The objective uh, objective uh, is that you will do extra or internal examination, pulp vitality test, pulp sensibility test, radiographs, pedial examination, uh, percussion, palpation. These are all our objective in which you, you, in which we try to find out, okay, what is the response of the tooth, the same tooth or the, uh, the patient is telling or some other tooth, okay. Then the appraisal, that is the, we come to a diagnosis and then we take, uh, then we come to the source, source of the pain, the etiology, and we discuss the etiology and the prognosis with the patient. Yes, this tooth can be saved and this tooth can be used as an abutment in future. We can discuss with the patient the prognosis of the tooth and then we can plan it accordingly that we need this need an endodontic treatment, this needs a periodontal treatment or this needs a restorative treatment and can refer accordingly. 